Okay, let's look at rhythm for our piece. The first thing to look at is the tempo. Now, I've gone ahead of time and I've started looking at appropriate tempos for my piece. I've decided on 86 BPMs, 86 beats per minute. This is quite good for the piece. The scene cuts tend to hit around that point, and that's really what you're looking for. A tempo that flows nicely and can get the scene cuts almost on the beat. The more to the grid or the more to the beat that you can be uh, with your scene cuts and the movement of the piece, the easier it's going to be for you to lay down the music, lay down the sound effects, lay down all the elements because you can you can try and work to the grid. It's going to be not as simple as that because not all not all films are laid out this way and trailers are not laid out this way. So there's a bit of manipulation that you need to do. Sometimes you're going to need to go into the global tracks and you're going to need to look at this tempo track and actually change the tempo track at different points. You might need to speed it up or slow it down. If you want to change the BPMs, because I think yours is set at 120, just double click and then you can just write the value in there. So if I just write in 86 and press enter, there you go, it goes to 86. Next thing then, you're going to want to play around with rhythms. How I've started my particular piece is with this rhythm guide. So if I click on the rhythm guide, I've just kind of tried to plot out the scene changes. So if I just solo that, try to get everything to the beat. And that was one of the one of the ways in which I determined the tempo for this piece is by just putting a kick drum on the first beat of each bar and just seeing what kind of rhythm would work. And the kind of pattern that I've come up with is obviously on the beat and then just before the beat. This seems to work quite well as it, it just leads into the beat and sometimes the scene changes do come just before the beat so it can do a little bit of masking for you which is quite nice. Let's have a little look at just the guide rhythms. And it is literally just a simple guide bass drum just so I can start synchronising all the other rhythms. So here we go from the beginning. As you can see, I mean, especially on this one, the scene change happened here, but it, it really does mask it quite well. Um, so first thing I would suggest for you guys to do, lay down a guide rhythm, just a simple rhythm, find out where the beats are, try and determine the tempo, and get all that groundwork done first. Get that groundwork done early, because it can cause quite a, a bit of aggro later on if you um, if you haven't got that right. Okay, next thing, let's look at simple rhythms. If you are on the lesson, you have this little presentation. So the first slide that we've got here is just looking at basic rhythms. Some of you might have trouble quantizing, so working out what this note is in contrast to the actual piano roll. So let's just do that now. So here we, here we have a whole note or a semi-brief. It takes up the whole bar. So on the piano roll, if I just start a new empty MIDI region, and I press escape and bring up my pencil tool it will take up a whole bar okay so from bar 1 to bar 2 that is a whole note nice and easy okay next one this half note or minim will take up half the bar and draw it in draw in another one and then you can see we've got two beats for a bar, okay, taking up half the bar. I'm just going to do a couple more. I'm going to write these rhythms out for you just so you can kind of get to understand how transferring notation from a simple score like this, a rhythm score like this, onto the piano roll. It's, it's not as daunting as you may think. It's important for me to say is that I've got my bars divided up or quantized into 16s. So each beat is divided into four. So four. 8, 12, 16, okay? You can change this. 16 is is just a good value. So now you know that a bar is divided up into 16s. Let's look at this. So let's draw that out. Okay, so I've got four beats per bar, and you can see that each one of these notes, each one of these crotchet notes or 
quarter notes takes up four squares. Okay. So there's bar two, there's bar one, and you can see within that bar I've got four notes. Nice and easy. Finally, the eighth note. Um, we're we're going to stop at eight notes for this. You can obviously have 16 notes. You can have eight notes, you can have 32 notes, and all, and all the rest of it. Work. But generally, most of the things that you, you need to do, you can do within within the uh, quarter note and above. So this time we've got eight, eight notes to a bar. So let's just draw that in. So this time, two squares equals quaver. Okay, so two squares equals quaver. Nice and simple. So that's that first page taken care of. Now comes the rhythms that you might actually want to use for it. Not to say you won't want to use rhythms one, but they're very simple. And think about using cross rhythms as well. Think about mixing and matching these. These are just guide rhythms. You can change these as much as you want. Don't feel that you have to stick with the, the rhythms that I've chosen here. I literally just wanted to give you some grounding just so you can get going with it. Okay. So rhythms two. For some reason I've copied that same rhythm over. It doesn't matter. Okay, this one, we've got a little rest here. So this value here is a rest, but it equals the same as that. So rather than having a crotchet beat, we just have a gap. So let's do that one. Once again, four squares, four squares, miss four squares, because that's my rest. Okay, and that looks like that. Beat one, beat one, beat two, Beat two, beat three, beat three, beat four, beat four. Um, if you do have trouble reading music and you, you want to go into this a bit further, I have attached a link to this lesson to take you off to some really simple um, music theory lessons that, that will really help you with this. And that looks deeper into how to quantize and how to kind of how the notes values work. Next thing you want to do is work out whether you want a melodic rhythm or whether you want a percussive rhythm sound. For my next three rhythm sounds, I've just chosen percussive rhythms, but rhythms can be built up on melodic instruments as well as percussive instruments. So don't feel restricted in any way when you're building up these textures. Have a little play with them, see what's available. Now, all I've done, clicked on, I've created three tracks by just pressing this little plus button as before, and then I've come over and I've chosen from my live, if I scroll backwards, drums and percussion, and I've, I'm using this ultra beats. Generally, ultra beat is for drum kits, but it does have some nice ones, especially for Sintel, where it it really is an Asian sort of texture that we're going for. So I've chosen three kits: an Asian kit, an Indian kit, an African kit. Don't feel that you have to stick with these kits. You can use whichever ones you want. Experiment with them. Once again, if you if you click on your caps lock key, you can bring up your keyboard. Failing that, if you don't want to use the caps lock and you just want to type it all, all the rhythms in, which is fine, you can use the keyboard down the side. Okay. So, the first rhythm that I've been using on this piece, scroll back to the beginning, is this rhythm here. Okay. <clears throat> so, I've just input this note and I'm just playing at the moment. I've, it's quite a good idea to input the notes first, put the loop button on, so just drag out the green line and just see if you like the rhythm that you've chosen and then see how it fits with the music, then choose the instrument you want. Because once you've got once you've got the notation in and you've got it looping, it'll just keep going around itself. And if you don't like the kit that you, you've chosen, or you don't like the instrument you've chosen, you can either come and change it here, or you can find a different sound here. You can just Press escape, go back to the pointer, loop select all of these. So all I did there was just click, drag, and I can just drag it down by either pressing alt down, alt down, or just clicking on the center of one of these notes and just dragging it down until I find the note that I want. Okay, once I'm happy with that, I'm going to turn the loop off. I'm just going to see how that fits with the music. So once again, I've just looped a few of these sections. Um, if I wanted to change the actual rhythm from bar to bar, 
obviously I wouldn't loop I would just pull out the bottom so that's the top corner if I pull out the bottom it gives me some extra bars to play with and I can change the rhythm with film music the rhythms won't always stay the same so you are going to have to look at how these change and, and um, develop them for this I've chosen just to stick with this for two, two more bars and just to see how, how it works out. It actually works quite well. So let's play that, see what you reckon. And I've stopped it there as it goes into the next scene. And with the, the other music, into the next rhythm and this is quite interesting because I've taken I've gone from the Asia kit to the India kit sorry the India kit to the Asian kit so I really wanted that nice thud cymbal sound if I can find it there it is and I've used two different sounds although I've picked a rhythm and here's the rhythm I've picked for this piece it is this one here so this is the rhythm I've picked I've actually chosen two different sounds. So I've chosen this kind of Asian cymbal sound going on to some kind of bongo sound. Okay, and that's quite nice because it needed to transition and hit hit the bongo. So just have a listen to that again. Then once again I'm going to build this up. I've just used a whole note rhythm for this one, so back to page one, just use that one, but the actual sound itself has is, a, is a, just a rattle, so it's a continuous rattle, and that's quite nice, you'll find that a few of these sounds have that, there you go, if you want these continuous sounds, and when you're building up textures of rhythms, that can be really useful, layering these sounds, so if I put that on top of on top of the rattle that I've got. Let's see what you think of that. It just helps build up the texture. So that's the rhythm change. And you can just see all I've done here is I've started by just creating three rhythm tracks. And I've started off just by layering out the rhythms individually. Eventually, um, I have layered it with the guide track as well, which works really well. Eventually, I will start mixing and matching these rhythms up, cross rhythms, and, and getting the instrument tracks to work together as I build the textures further. What you're going to want to look at then is making sure that all the tracks are not pan to center. So if you remember, this is our pan dial here. So I'm going to keep the guide track in the center. With rhythm one, I'm just going to pull it to the left. So that will come out of the left speaker now. With rhythm two, I'm going to pull it off to the right. Depending on how far you want it to go over, depending on how much you're going to put it to the right or the left. Um, and then the third one, I'm just going to leave that in the center. That can be really useful. It's just going to add a lot of space. It's going to make things feel like you've got things behind you or to the side of you. Um, and it can help build the tension. Finally, for this lesson, let's look at velocity. In the tools palette, so if you press escape ESC in the tools palette you'll see a tool called velocity so velocity tool this is changing the volume of the individual notes if you notice that this note is is more orange and this is green if I click the note and drag upwards I can make that note louder okay so click and drag upwards this is going to be really useful if you want to change the accent of the piece if they all remain green the piece is going to sound very mechanical, okay? You've got to add a little bit of variation, and using velocity can be a real bonus. Adding the accents can just can just give enough movement that um, it develops the piece and takes it out of, out of being typed in and mechanical onto something more exciting. So listen to this, see what you think. Let's put that on loop. Just solo it. Okay. 
So you need to now hear when it gets to this point here on the last beat. Da 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 da. You know, and the accent's completely changed. And wherever you put the accent, you will find that the rhythm values they actually do change. So let's try it here. Let's try these two. Okay, those are the tools for this lesson. What you now need to do is add multiple layers of rhythms, add percussive rhythms first, add your guide rhythm, change the tempo, and then look at more melodic instruments. Look at panning, look at all the different things you can, can do. Don't stick with one idea. Develop that idea. Don't think, oh, one pattern will do all the way through. Develop that idea. See where it can end up. I think you'll surprise yourself just using six or seven simple rhythms and developing those ideas can have some really astounding results.